Recognize this? This is a green screen. It is a neon green piece of cloth typically placed in the background of a shot. The green screen has become synonymous with visual effects. It allows the placement of virtually anything in the background of a shot. It allows filmmakers or visual effects artists to shape entirely new scenes for practically nothing. Things such as video and graphics, just to name a few. Its use is in everything from weather forecasts to feature films. I imagine we all recognize this all too familiar filming technique. It has become industry standard. But what if I told you this wasn't always once the case? Before the green screen there was a much more common technique. One which has essentially faded away into the land of obscurity. Shortly before the widespread use of chroma key compositing, there was a lesser known way of transporting actors and props into other environments. This was known as rear projection. Rear projection wasn't too dissimilar to green screen. It involved actors standing in front of a screen, while a projector right behind the screen casts a reversed image of any desired background. First thought up in the 1930s, it has seen many uses over the years, most famously perhaps in this clip from Alfred Hitchcock's 1959 feature film, North by Northwest, in which the character of Roger Thornhill is attacked by a crop duster. To achieve this shot, Hitchcock used on-location footage and combined it masterfully with studio-based rear projection. It provided Hitchcock with a degree of control, requiring less takes to get the scene correct on the day. Rear projection also provides an element of safety to the actors involved. James Cameron is also a director who in the past preferred the use of rear projection over blue and green screen for this very instance. Rear projection allowed Cameron for the use of an actor over a stuntman, required in such scenes like this from Terminator 2. Ready. Scenes involving moving vehicles. Cameron also used rear projection in this scene from Aliens. Perhaps my favourite use of the technology. Overall, it allowed for more outrageous stuff than you previously couldn't achieve, whilst also simultaneously prioritising actor safety. Further benefits of rear projection were that it assisted in providing colour and texture. The lighting that was indirectly captured with rear projection helped sell the scenes in question. Rear projection also would help allow actors to do less heavy lifting and imagine the worlds they were occupying, versus its solid green cousin, the green screen, something that's been an all too frequent complaint among the industry. Stop motion legend Ray Harryhausen also implemented the practice of rear projection into his work. He gave focus on perfecting the art, which would later give his works the age of others at the time. Harryhausen pioneered a variation of the technique called Dynamation. This is Dynamation. This is Dynamation. This is Dynamation. This is Dynamation. Dynamation, much like rear projection, involved the rear screen in the background of a shot, this time instead placed on a miniature set alongside stop motion creatures. Later re photographed with an animation capable camera, which would seamlessly combine both elements together. It was on the feature film The Beast from 2000 Fathoms that Harryhausen first used this technique and would go on to use it in countless others after. Rear projection saved Harryhausen and his team time and money, reducing costs and the intensive labour that would otherwise go on into full miniature sets. Dynamation also had the given benefit of allowing for very close interaction between human actors and the animated creatures. Because of the fact the models were animated directly in front of the screen, it was now possible for Harryhausen to synchronise the movements of the models with previously filmed action, allowing for newfound thrills all before the advent of well sophisticated computer graphics that came after. Rear projection was once a staple in Hollywood, but as time went on and the use of green screen and visual effects became more widespread and less costly, the choice to use the once familiar technique came down to an artistic choice rather than a necessity. Lost, the technique became largely obsolete, with very few directors keeping the practice alive, and as the years passed, rear projection faded into obscurity. The advent of CGI and all advancement of visual effects made rear projection all but obsolete, but as with most things, it has made a resurgence in the recent years, bigger and bolder than once before. Stagecraft is an evolution and rebirth of rear projection, pioneered by the experts at Industrial Light Magic, 
and Epic Games. It is run by seven machines and projected onto several large LED screens. Stagecraft is truthfully mind-blowing exciting technology. It will dictate the future of how television and movies will be made going forward, with such movies like The Batman, For Love and Thunder, and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania choosing to use the revolutionary technology. The Mandalorian was the first major production to solely choose LED screens over green screen. Why? All thanks to the combination with the world's most open and advanced real-time 3D creation tool, Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine in conjunction with Stagecraft allows directors the ability to change the time, location and lighting of a shot, all essentially at the tip of their fingertips, marrying pre-production, production and post. It's truly a relationship never seen before. Stagecraft also removes the need for a visual effects shot to be completed after the period of shooting, instead allowing the shot to be completed on the day. It's no secret that high budget green screen takes a lot more work and especially time. Things such as rotoscoping and compositing actors can at times be overcomplicated and frustrating, hair especially being the bane of rotoscoping artists. With green screen its biggest problem is also spill. Take this behind the scenes moment from The Hobbit. Each individual metal sword due to the reflective nature had to be redone in post, with visual effects artists painstakingly rotoscoping out the reflective spill of the green screen. This in turn gave each sword an odd fake glow. This is just one element of spill I noticed. However, green screen spill is quite a problem for most productions. With The Mandalorian, green screen spill wasn't an option, due to the main character being head to toe in reflective Beskar metal. Thus, the stagecraft solved this problem, with the light coming from the game engine producing a realistic spill on the moment. This reduced the need for VFX artists to go in post and tidy it all up. The in-studio light captured by the volume helps sell the scenes better. Without the behind the scenes photos and videos produced by ILM, I'm sure we would have been oblivious to it all. I know I was. With rear projection, its main fault was the resolution of the image behind was becoming more blatantly obvious. With cameras getting better and better over time, you could easily notice how low the resolution in the background was in comparison with the foreground element. Stagecraft also eliminates this as Unreal Engine produces open real-time 4K imagery, allowing for the director and visual effects artist to change the resolution at any given moment, prioritizing what's going to be seen in camera. The efficiency of Stagecraft speeds along production. It gives the director complete control of his or her environments. And with the control comes better timing overall, which is also super beneficial with the time we are currently living in, with COVID-19 halting the travel of full productions. This technology is also the ideal tool for television series, which typically have shorter production budgets and even time frames. In addition, Stagecraft brings back that interaction between the set and the actors, keeping the relationship between the two intact and for a franchise that relied so heavily on green screen during the prequels, it was a nice change of pace to discover them jump back into the old art of rear projection. No longer did the actors in The Mandalorian have to do all the work pretending they were in an environment. Little was left to the imagination. In fact, the set seemingly came to them. With what seems to be the complete rebirth of rear projection in the form of stagecraft, there is no sign of the once forgotten production asset slowing down, with ILM and Disney amidst building three separate volumes in key cities around the world, such as Los Angeles, London and Australia. They are essentially building the studio of the future. So does this mean the death of the green screen? Not entirely of course, as it will always be cheaper to grab a cheap sheet of green cloth and go to work. In fact, it hasn't been more available as it is today with people able to create full-scale, albeit small productions in their own living rooms, with the advent of Twitch and YouTube in recent years. Truthfully, green screen, and even blue screen, at this current state of time, is also more available to the indie filmmaker and smaller studios. Even in The Mandalorian, there were times where they would also rely on the old trusty green screen for compositing shots, while simultaneously utilizing the volume entirely for lighting, blending the two later in post. However, the potential is vast and truthfully unlimited. One great thing is Unreal Engine is open source and free to use. It has recently been highly adopted by the film and television industry. This exciting new technology will over time pay for itself, with Disney already committing to building several other studios around the world. The short term cost is high, but long term it can save money on locations, set building, and the fact is, the sheer ability to roll pre-production and post-production into one, and as the technology continues to grow, it will certainly completely change how televisions and movies are made going forward. This game-changing technology has without a doubt shifted the paradigm. Rear projection. What was once a technology at the end of its deathbed, couldn't be more alive today. It'll be truly exciting to see where it goes next.